All right, so let me see. I think I forgot to turn on. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, we are on our fifth, I believe, e seminar. We missed one last month. So let me see. Let me count one, two, three, four. Yes, we are on our fifth e seminar at EDU on Go. Uh, every seminar is more excited than the previous one. This one is uh, one of the most excited so far that we're going to have. Uh, right now it's 10 a.m. Pacific or 10.01 Pacific. Um, and today we, we, are, we have a very special guest, a friend of mine, uh, that I will introduce him shortly. But before I do that, I would like to just go over uh, how you can ask questions during the seminar. And... I am going to log in into a different screen here real quick that I can see your questions. So give me one second. I wasn't quite ready before I started, but I wanted to start at 10 sharp. So here we go. I'm logging in into a screen that uh, you will be able to ask questions. All right, let's see. Okay, so at the lower right corner, there is a, there is a green tab that says online, okay? The, the video that you're watching right now, if you look at the lower right corner, that tab will always stay there, and it will say online. If you expand that tab, you can type in your question, and then I can see it on my monitor to the left. So this way I can read the questions out to Thomas or any questions that I can answer for you. I would be uh, happy to do so. Uh, there's also a form that you can submit right next to the video. And I will also get those questions if you submit that form. Now, there is always a, a list of questions that get submitted through that form before the live session. So I will read some of those questions as well. So these are just some of the housekeeping items for this page. Okay, and today we have, like I said, a very special guest, uh, Thomas Garrett. Uh, my friend Thomas, he is an instructional designer uh, with a master's degree in his field and years of experience creating content for Intel, Boeing, Microsoft, AT&T, IBM, Nike, oh my God, Humana, and others. So, <laughs> some fortune. Fortune 100 looks like companies. Um, at Ediongo, he is our uh, go-to. He is our go-to consultant of course design. So uh, I'm sure, one way or another, everybody has been educated online, and even this seminar itself, this e-seminar, is of some form of education. And Thomas is an expert to how to lay out uh, e-learn effective e-learning content. Uh, so he helps us at EDM will do that. He helps our clients do that, etc. Uh, he's also an expert on resume development, so he will uh, briefly talk about his new course on resume development, which I think is pretty attractive for, and intuitive for everybody to take, take a look at. For the past seven years, he has volunteered his time to help the long-term unemployed find meaningful work. So he has been contributing to the community a lot. I know he has a pretty big uh, group on LinkedIn, which he will talk about it probably. Uh, so Thomas, that was uh, the one paragraph intro that I did for you. I'm sure there's so much to say, but uh, uh, why don't you say hi and uh, we'll get going to the next item or next agenda. Okay, okay. well, thanks for the introduction. Are you, uh, am I talking loud enough? Yeah, this is good now. Oh, good, good, okay. Um, well, what can I say? Uh, it's my experience that people who need work uh, have a real hard time getting resumes. They work for them. They can spend money on those resumes and still not get anything worthwhile. And uh, though they don't know how to write a, write a resume, they are the ones that know the most about themselves. So this course is designed to help those people do a better job with uh, create in a resume and get a job so yeah very cool so I guess we'll we'll get into that course uh, later uh, 
in the seminar. Um, why don't we start with, in at very high level, talking about what is an instructional design? Because from its word, design and instructions, it doesn't always mean it's about e-learning. So can we, can you briefly explain what is an instructional design role? Okay, so uh, let me point out that there are two kinds of instructional designers. An instructional designer may work for a school, in which case uh, an instructor or a professor may say, I need you to create a course on English 101 or engineering aerodynamics 105 or whatever. And in that case, you just create the course. But if you work for a corporation like Boeing, Intel, Microsoft, whatever, you're really a business consultant. You listen to a manager who has a particular problem. Something's not working right. Uh, production's not going right. Uh, results are not what they want. And they, they ask us to create a course to solve the problem. So our first job really is to walk in there and understand the problem. We have to find out whether training will solve the problem. What is the problem? What are the dynamics that lead up to the problem? How would training solve that problem if it would solve problems? So sometimes, sometimes the manager thinks they know what the problem is, and our job is to verify that, confirm it, and then determine whether training will fix it, and then create the training. So the training is usually in e-learning, and we write content, we create video, we do a lot of research. There's there's just so many different things involved in being an instructional designer that uh, it's probably one of the most interesting jobs you can get. I've spent my time walking through manufacturing plants, climbing on 747s and watching how they assemble wings and, you know, gone to Intel and looked at the way they make chips and lots of interesting things. You, you get to be right in the middle of it when you're doing instructional design for corporations. Here's, so, so some of the questions that I might read from people that have submitted in that form, uh, some of them are live. Uh, so here's a question from that form. Uh, can an instructional designer be self-taught or do you recommend going to school for it? Well, I think an instructional designer could be self-taught. Um, I'd recommend books for those people. Anybody who wants to ask me, I can tell you. Uh, Ruth Clark's book, Building Expertise, is a great one. I think a person needs to be a good writer to start with. That's the first thing. They need to know how to write well and communicate well, because that's instructional design is at at the core. It's communication. Uh, basically, we're not subject matter experts, so we don't know specifically things like how to assemble wings to an aircraft. But we have a subject matter expert that we we turn to. We might have a panel of subject matter experts. So we we basically get the information from them, and then it's our job to express it. So it's a pretty complicated job, and I think that there are books you can get that would help you. It'd probably be faster for you, and, and uh, you'd get there easier if you go to a, a program. My advice for anybody interested in this career is to work a bit in the field uh, so under other instructional designers before you get the training. So try to get a job as a writer, content writer, uh, graphic artist, whatever, working with instructional designers so you get a feel for how the, what the job is and you get your feet into it. Then if you go, go ahead and get into a training program for instructional design, it'll make a lot more sense. A lot of people get into, they want to become an instructional designer, they'll go to a master's program and they'll study, but it's all theory and they can't apply it to anything. So it would be much, much better for these people if they had some, some experience. And, People can write me. I'll give my ideas on how to get into it. It's not impossible. It's easy to get into the field. Uh, I shouldn't say it's actually easy. <laughs> it's easy to get started in it, uh, as far as getting some practice and that sort of thing. Even people with master's degrees struggle to get their job, primarily because employers don't hire anybody who doesn't have experience. So the first thing employers want to know, as you'll see in my course, is can this person do the job? I have some work that needs to be done. Can they do it? And I want to see some proof that they can do it, like they've done it for somebody else. Don't tell me anything about what you did in school, because that's for children. <laughs> school, school is where kids are, and school is where you get your start in in your field. But before Someone I hire is you, is chatting you on Skype. Uh oh. <laughs> 
Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I have Skype opened as well. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, my computer has a way of telling me when somebody's uh, talking to me. So. Oh, okay. I should cool. turn that off, but I don't know how right now. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. okay. Is that so, a question? You think? I, I I believe so. Yeah, that's pretty pretty out there where they can they can do more research on their own if they if they wanted to. But I think that does answer the question. Um, so do you do you prefer going after corporate training or schools first? What what's your? I much prefer going after corporate training because it's much more fun. I mean, when you create school, you're simply closing a gap. Somebody says you have to teach somebody how to do something. But when you go into a corporation, you've decided what you're going to teach only after you've, you've explored things. You know, you get to know things. People come to me and I have to create a course for something I didn't even know existed. Teradata. You know, uh, what the heck is Teradata? I never heard of it. But that's the adventure of it in the corporate world. Also. In the corporate world, you're sitting down with an executive or a head manager or something, and they're telling you their trouble. So you're right there in the middle of it, and and it's it's so cool to be able to sit there like a fly on the wall and explore things you never saw before, to walk into manufacturing plants, to see new technology. Uh, it was really exciting with the 787 to see how they used laser positioning things to and robots that that you know drilled out holes and put in rivets and stuff like that it was just very very interesting uh and in a, uh in the corporate set, i mean in the academic setting somebody just tells you what to do uh in in the corporate world it's it's a much bigger role for you uh needs assessment i mean i'm going to be assessing a course and i'm going to i may discover that in order to affect change before a course is delivered, management needs to do something. It may be they need to make an offer to employees so that they're more open to a new role. Uh, but they have to do something because resistance to the change may be too great. And I, if they're not going to do that first, then the training is not going to be effective. So you have all this interesting dynamics going on in the corporate. So it, as far as I'm concerned, the corporate learning is much more fun, much more interesting. Also, in the corporate world, we have a problem. We measure the problem, and when we're through with the training, we want to see whether we made a change. That's also really exciting. In the academic world, you're just giving them some information. You don't know if it does any good or not. There's no way to measure whether you know, people learn and actually apply it on their job and it helps them. There's no way. You're just throwing it out there and hoping it does some good. But in the corporate world, if you have an organization that's really well managed, they want to see evidence of the problem and they want to see that you change that evidence. So there's, you know, maybe it's uh, people are getting injured using a particular piece of equipment. How many hours of uh, lost time resulted from injuries on that equipment in last year and the last five years? And then we're going to track that for the next few years. And if I change those numbers, I'm a hero. <laughs> So basically, so an instructional designer helps the subject matter expert, and they're always in the learning mode, it looks like, the instructional designers. They, they oh, yeah, yeah. I never did homework when I was in school, and uh, so this is God's way of punishing me. I do homework <laughs> every day now, <laughs> but it's actually a lot more fun now. I mean, I, I, the, the homework is more interesting to me, so I actually enjoy it. So real quick, for people that join a little late, uh, we're talking about instructional designers which is these people that help subject matter experts corporations or schools lay out effective e-learning courses okay and let me correct you just for a minute we don't actually help anybody we're the boss you're the boss here we go that's even better the subject matter experts are our servants in a sense Got it. They're there to help us get information. We ask them. It's like we're investigators. They have information. We keep prying for information. We run the project. We decide how the course is supposed to be designed, what's going to be in the course. We definitely work with a stakeholder who's going to approve what we're doing because we've got to be on the same page with the stakeholder. But pretty much we run the show. 
And, and when we talk to the stakeholder, we're like their doctor or lawyer. We know more about what we're doing than they do. So we, we ask them to trust us. There's a question live. How technical do you have to be to get an instructional designer entry level position? Um, well, it's interesting you ask. First off, in my opinion, an instructional designer is first a communicator, an analyst. Um, th they're an organizer. You know, you're structuring information. Those things are far more important than technology. But when you're talking about entering into the field, you may be more valuable as a technologist. So you're going to use Captivate, Storyline, some of these Camtasia. If you can use these tools, you can you can work. Uh, you can support the instructional designer. So that is a way to get in without the master's degree or any of that extensive training. So an answer, that was a good, a good question because uh, that technology, and it's not really hard to learn how to use those tools, but if you can say you know how to use Captivate, Storyline, Camtasia, uh, articulate uh, these different pro technologies for voiceover, for video editing, for presentation creation, if you can use those tools, then you can take a storyboard from somebody else, and you can put that stuff together, and it's a great way to get a feel for the job, you know, to get an inside view. So I, I think it leads to the next question where, what are, so what are some of the questions employers ask that at high level that you, you can cover? Like, what, what would they ask? Um, well, the first thing they're going to ask, they're not going to ask you, they're going to ask it of your resume. Right. Uh, yeah. They're going to ask, have you done this work before? So, and if, if your resume demonstrates that you have done something of value that they need done, then they're going to be talking to you. But if it doesn't demonstrate that, they're not even going to ask you any questions. They'll never get to you. <laughs> because your resume is going to be round file. <laughs> Right. So, so it, questions they might ask after they meet you is things like, um, you know, uh, tell me about your experience working with subject matter experts, you know, because they want to know that you work with uh, subject matter experts and get along with them. The interesting thing about subject matter experts is even though they don't work, we don't work for them, they don't work for us. They're usually there as volunteers. They've got a regular job that they're supposed to do, and they're judged by their performance on their regular work. They don't really have to give you a lot of help. So your job is to build a good relationship with them so they really want to. Um, and so it's really important to them that you know how to work with subject matter experts, can maintain that rapport, or that relationship, and get the information you need from the subject matter experts. So they're going to be asking about that. They might ask you about your experience working with stakeholders, your experience doing front-end analysis on a job, that's assuming you're a full-time instructor, you know, a full instructional designer. But if you're that technologist that's coming in, then all they might ask is, do you know how to use this tool? Tell me about your experience using this tool. You know, show me some of your work. Um, and, uh, you know, so questions like that would, would be um, typical. So, so do you recommend getting an internship position first before applying for a professional? You have to have experience. If you, can, you know, that's the age-old question. How do you get a job if they require you to have experience and you don't have experience? They won't give you a job to get experience. So how do you get going? Well, you, you, have, to, you have to make your experience. If you can't get somebody to hire you, it could be an internship. It could be opportunities where you do something for nothing for somebody. Um, you have to find a way to, to do something and be able to put it on a resume have somebody verify that you did that something. So you can do that with an internship. You can do that any number of ways. Most internships give very little support. The Keelworks internship that I run is, is pretty involved. There are only about 15 spots in that internship. Uh, and usually those people in that internship already have a master's degree. Um, but if people don't have a master's degree and want to be involved, and they're good writers, then I think um, I think I can help them. But um, we'd have to. It it oftentimes depends on the person's self confidence. Sometimes people without a master's degree can be very successful self taught, but they got to have enough confidence that they're not going to be feeling um, inadequate because other people have master's degrees. 
in reality, those people that are coming to us with master's degrees know very little. Um, they have a lot of theory that they have no practical, re rel they can't relate it to anything practical and they've forgotten half of what they just learned. <laughs> so I, I think if a person studies hard and has enough confidence not to be intimidated by the fact that other people have more degrees, they'll be fine. All right. Okay, so one more time for people that come in late. Uh, if you want to ask questions live, you can click on the tab at the lower right corner where it says online. And in that tab, if you write the question, I can see it on my monitor to the left, and I will read out the question. So I'm going to pull one, one more question from this list, and then, uh, Thomas, we can move on to actually show how Keel works, uh, you know, the, the courses and what Keel works does. And then later on, we'll jump into the resume course. Okay. Uh, so the last question I want to pull from the, li the list, I can come back here, is this is pretty interesting. So are most instructional designer work done remotely based on your experience or in person? Well, that's an interesting question. I've done lots of work remotely and a lot of work on site. But let me tell you the funny thing about working on site. Like if I'm at uh, Folsom, California for Intel, uh, Intel requires me to be on site, but all of the people I work for at Intel, all my stakeholders, my subject matter experts, they're not where I am in Folsom, California. They're someplace else. So I'm really working remotely, even if I have to be on site. Um, until 2008, the, the recession, uh, we didn't have any trouble uh, being remote. But once the recession came around, employers thought, well, we can there's uh, more work out there. I mean, there's less work out there. It's a buyer's market. We can demand that people be on site. So there's been more on site requirements, but it's, it's, not, um, it's not essential. It, it, you, I do all my work really remotely. And whether I have the job remote or not, whether the employer lets me work from home or not, is, it's just up to the employer's comfort level. And I'd say, of the jobs out there for instructional designers today, probably 5% are remote. Um, and the best, your best chance of getting remote work, and remote work pays less than on-site work, naturally, because if you're going to be on-site, you're basically working away from home. You're doing a contract type thing. Um, I definitely would recommend uh, you, you avoid the contract work uh, in instructional design because you're basically an outsider. Uh, and it's hard to be an outsider in this kind of work. Um, so if you can get a job in a corporation and you're a full-time employee there, I think it's more likely to be able to work remote after you've started. So I don't know how to answer that question really better than what I just did. It's, uh, it depends on circumstances. The job can be done and easily be done remote. It really depends on the employer. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. Okay, so let me see. I'm going to start sharing my screen pretty soon. Uh, I want to actually show the Keelworks uh, course catalog. And then, uh, Thomas, you can also share the screen and go some of the, maybe some of the courses that uh, uh, students can, can join. So give me one second. Did you want me to talk a little bit about why Keelworks uses EDU on Go and what its advantages are in instructional design? Let, let's start with that. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. So while you talk, I will share the screen, okay? Okay. So first, let me just say that we use EDU on Go because it, it, it supports the collaborative uh, environment of learning where learners can talk to each other. It also supports a lot of very interesting technology um, I, I can create a course in Keelworks that, um, that allows for discussion, that includes videos, that links to web pages. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, it is a very uh, elaborate uh, system that supports the best learning models. That's the reason why we use uh, ED1 Go. Um, most online learning is what we call a page turner. Uh, you read something, you click the next page, you click pages after that. Um, and if um, <laughs> I could, uh, 
I could show you that um, we have numerous courses that are not on our catalog. Um, we have three different uh, instructional design teams, of all interns, and most of our work is um, training interns to be instructional designers. Uh, they're working on these courses you see here, assertiveness, communication, conflict resolution, critical thinking. Um, the way we design courses, we don't want to be too explicit. We want to, we want to give enough puzzle there so that a group of learners can work out uh, understanding and basically get to the point where they're teaching each other. Um, if we're doing that, uh, learning is, is a much better experience. Um, for learners so very cool so the url is keel works keel dot keel dash works dot ediongo.com so let me just make that big and i gotta tell you that people come into these courses that you see there like communication assertiveness those are not complete courses they're they're things that interns are working on and um i think um you might want to give my email address to people if um, if they want to write me and talk about courses um, and and get advice. Um, any questions they have for me, uh, they're welcome to write me, and, and I'd be happy to respond. Got it. Okay. So here's the Go email. Do you want to share another email, or this is good enough? That's good. That's good. All right. Very cool. So. Um, I guess uh, for you guys that would like to take any of these courses, it looks like uh, Thomas has 244. You can say majority are instructional designers, right? People that want to be instructional designers. Is that correct? Um, no, I think about 50-50. Uh, people want to be instructional designers, but there's a whole lot of people that are coming for those courses that we're trying to develop, my interns are working on. So, um, you know, so there's, there's a mix. Okay, so somebody's saying cannot see my screen. I guess it's gonna come in later. Uh, Thomas, can you see my screen? I see your screen, yeah. Okay, so I think uh, it could, uh, the, the, sometimes in Google Hangout, the, the sound, it could be a little bit uh, behind. So you should be able to see my screen soon. Uh, you know, the audio is, it lags behind sometimes. You and I are in the um, are in the hangout together. I don't know what the relation. You know, I don't know if what you and I see is the same as what people who join. Yeah, they will see us and they will see my screen. Uh, so I think we should be able to do that. Let me let me live, give a last uh, uh, plug for the the resume course. Um, the, the resume course is designed to help people understand the theory behind a good resume. Um, the big difference, the big thing that people lack an understanding about the resume is that it's not, a good resume should not be what you want to tell your listener about yourself. It has to be what your listener needs to know about you. What is their question and answer their question. Don't think so much about what you want to say. Think about what they want to hear and give them answers to their questions. Um, and uh, the link to the um, to the resume is uh, is at um, uh, noace.edu on go. Oh, you got it. Okay, no. Yeah. Yeah. Dot edu on go dot com. So that's that's the one for the resume. So this course oh. costs uh, twenty five dollars. If somebody finds twenty five dollars too much money. They can't afford it, then they need to let me know and I'll get them a break on it. Um, well, the, the one, uh, so this one is not really the resume course, the one at Keywords. Or is that right? Okay. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I didn't realize that was there. I'd have to it's check it out and find out what's going on there. But this, this, the, the resume course is at Noise. This at, is the one you just started now. Yeah. Right. Okay. So let me. Let me get inside. I just want to show what's inside uh, real quick, okay? Uh, I'm going to sh stop sharing the screen real quick so I can, uh, I can grab my super password to get inside.
Okay. Or I have to pull my, pull, pull my card out. But since I have that magic super password, I can get inside. Or super user. Everything on Killworks is free. The, the Noace is, uh, um, is cost a fee. And the reason why is because it's facilitated. It has, um, it has uh, people who are going to be there to help resume writers. Got it. Got it. Okay, so here I'm gonna share the screen again. Let's see where you at. So share. Okay, so let's see where is it? Writing the killer resume. I guess as a student, the way you will see it is like this. So yeah. Thomas, if you'd like to go over how the course is laid out, and I can just uh, navigate for you. Okay. Well, it's it basically starts with uh, a welcome, an introduction to the um, to the course, uh, and then the next module getting into um, and and the, the introduction has a has a video. Each one of these modules has a video, but there's also a lot of content, and there's questions that um, the way the way the whole thing works. Oh, also that video there about um, go ahead and go back to three that video there about we can do anything is a song I really enjoy but the message in that song is really a very good uh, explanation of how this learning model works together we can do anything uh, and uh, if we get learners working together and talking to each other it's amazing what we can accomplish so um, Okay, so here's where people can leave some comments. Yeah, or chat um, on the topic. Right. So the, um, the these rectangles you see there with the two faces on it, those are questions, discussion questions, and uh, getting involved in discussions about a subject it is an important part of our learning model. When we can get learners to talk and restate what they heard and understand. It helps them recognize where they've made a mistake. They thought they understood it, but they were wrong. In discussion, they can work that out. But most important, as they start telling each other what it is they understand, that really supports their retention, their memory, uh, their re being able to pull that up later. Because they're building a neural pathway between their working memory and where that Im information is stored in their brain. We never really forget anything. We just can't find it. That's the reason why we have trouble remembering. And if you learn something and you take some time to talk about it, you'll remember it. So that's part of how this learning model works. EDO on Go supports that really well. So the first module is just simply an introduction to the course. The second module starts to talk about things like your audience. Um, who is it? So one of the things that uh, I try to drive home in this course a lot is that um, uh, a good resume is written to re to your understanding of your audience. You you know what your audience wants, and you're responding. You you know what triggers your audience to action, so you're writing to set that trigger off. Um, and that kind of analysis is essential if you're going to write a good resume. So this course is designed to to help people understand what it takes to write a good resume. And at the very last module, you're going to be practicing writing your resume, sharing what you're writing with your peers, getting feedback. Uh, the hardest thing for people in writing a resume, when you're writing about yourself, it's harder. The hardest thing is simply talk about yourself in a logical, meaningful way. Because most of the time, when we write in our resume, it turns out to be mush. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not good because your resume is your first opportunity to demonstrate competence. You've got to show that you're a competent writer. And uh, I think that uh, uh, this course should help. Um, so the second module about the resume audience, I think the third module, we're going to get into all the different things that make up a good resume. There's lots of ways to mess up a resume. Uh, if you understand all the different factors to write your resume and maybe help other people. Uh, the course also provides uh, a link to, I mean, uh, it requires, it provides a template for a good resume. 
so that if you take that document and you simply fill in your data, you've got the structure. And that structure is pretty important. But I am trying to teach in this course also, how do you decide what's a good structure? Why is one structure better than another structure? So um, these, these uh, lectures, I, I haven't put all of the, the latest videos in, so I'll be getting that. I was doing that just before we met. So uh, the videos that are in there are fine, but um, some of them have been revised. This is one of the newer ones. Got it. So r real quick, people, I guess, from this course, if they join, they can also learn how an e-learning course is laid out effectively. So this course seems to have very simple layout, and I can go over some of the, you know, the navigation here. So as you can see on the left side, there is the main modules of the course, so you cannot miss them. Uh, you will land into this module. So as soon as you sign up, uh, you get into this module, and here inside, you can see the concepts or the learning objectives of uh, each module. And you can just click on the numbers here, or you can go next, next here. Uh, if you want to go to the next module, you can simply click here on the left or up right corner. This one is actually going to switch between the modules. So there's different ways you can get to the next one. There's also a drop down that it will get you there. So uh, here's the next one. And again, go through the numbers so you can uh, see some of the uh, action items and some of the discussions that you would have to discuss with peers inside the course. So here's a discussion topic. Uh, do you agree with the audience assumptions? And it looks like the course has discussion topics throughout the modules. Uh, this way, it's more interactive. Uh, and at the bottom here, so these are all the discussions, uh, I guess, consolidated into one list. So if you ever wanted to get to any of the discussions in this list and contribute towards that, you can come here on the left side and click on discussions. And so, Thomas, these are linked in the modules, right, as well? Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, and at the bottom here, here's uh, class files, which Thomas just talked about, the template you can download. So this is very cool. He already made an already, uh, you know, is it a Word document? Yeah, it's a Word document. Okay, so you download this Word document, you have the wireframe of a nice looking uh, resume, and you can fill it with the content in there. Uh, and all the way at the top is the course lounge area, which is pretty much the main wall of the course, the community of the course. And here you can post notes or ask questions, uh, post some media for others, maybe some uh, relative uh, or related uh, topics that you'd like to share with the class, et cetera, et cetera, uh, or an article, as you can see here. So <coughs> easy to follow and very nicely laid out. Uh, so if you join the scores, you will not only learn how to build a resume, you can also observe how an e-course is structured. So this is pretty cool. Um, and I know when you click on the videos, uh, you can watch the video on the left side. And on the right side, you can pause at any time and ask questions. So for example, here, I pause and then I say, no, I can ask a question. I don't want to type in something here uh, with dummy data, but uh, some of you, some of you already know how to use the the video noting capability for people that have used EDU on Go before. Uh, but feel free to ask any questions. And Thomas, you said this is instructor led, so you're going to come back here and answer some of the questions and follow up with the students. Yep. And basically, we don't call it instructor led; it's more facilitated. So. so the Facilitation is there basically to stimulate the conversation to, to help people solve some of their own problems rather than to tell, you know, do be sort of like the, we don't want to be the parent in the program, we want to be more of a um, uh, just guiding people when they're stuck or, or we can answer questions, but we try not to do too much telling. Okay. Very good. I think people are trying to write some more questions. All right, so I think somebody's trying to write a question, so I'll read those. Uh, <coughs> done. Okay. Um, 
very very cool this is a, an awesome course i believe so <clears throat> oh, i just had one question about the course as well uh, okay so and is there a way for students to upload their resume so you can give feedback once they get something up and ready did you have do you have like a Absolutely. yeah that's that's going to be really important um i can we can go through this whole thing but in the most important parts where people are going to write their resumes they're going to put they're going to put stuff up there uh they're going to talk about certain parts of their resume and they, they definitely it's really important for people to share their resumes and get feedback you pretty much have to build a resume through iteration. You're, you're creating a version, you're showing it, you're getting feedback, you're revising it, you're showing it, you're getting feedback, you're revising it. That's that's how a resume gets made. Got it, got it, okay. So where would they upload? Is it some of these discussion, uh, like? Uh, it's been a while since I looked, so it'll be up to me to make sure that it, but it probably would be an assignment. Okay, uh, yeah. So. Where, and they'll have, uh, you know, they'll have a place to upload it. Now, there's a couple of places to do it also. They can also put it in the lounge. Right, right, right. 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 Lounge. But that'll be, it's a good that you asked that question. It's been a while since I looked at this. So I need to make sure that that mechanism is really in place. Yeah. Because that's that's like 80% of the course. Uh, right, right. You upload okay. your resume and share it. So. If you have one, you know, one specific place that you want everybody to upload, and you can get them individually, because the course lounge, everybody would see each other's work. Which you know, people can, if they if they want to, they can share that with everybody and get feedback from everybody. Uh, but having one specific place that it comes only to you, and you can give private feedback, that would be awesome. I got to tell you that um, that. That group feedback is is really important. After all, if you write your resume, you're going to be sending it out to the world. Um, right. So keeping it, I mean, after all, you're also in a community of people who may know about a job. So sharing your resume with other people is not a bad idea. Um, so the more you talk about yourself and people hear about it and talk with you about what you do, you're going to find you're basically building a network. So. These people know about you if they're actually looking at your resume. So I don't know if I'd want to, I mean, I think it'd be silly if people were cautious about letting other people see their resume. It's, you don't have to put your email address and your phone number and personal information on it. Uh, but you can certainly talk about what your strengths are, the kind of work you did, that sort of thing. And I would, uh, you know, I, I, I would help people get past any concerns about sharing. So, um, Leveraging the community in this course, that's that's going to be the most important thing. Got I'll it. be there to make sure that, um, you know, that people don't go astray, that the wrong advice isn't given, that sort of thing. Um, basically, uh, by asking questions, how does that relate to this advice that we had on module two? You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. And Rid Van's there to back me up. Yeah. So if you if you have any questions and I don't answer them well enough, Red Van Red Van will answer them. He knows everything. There you go. I'm gonna throw something out, okay, on your behalf, Thomas. Okay. If people contact me, I will give them a code to discount your course to ten dollars, and good. I will work out a deal with you, Thomas. Okay. Sounds good. I like this course so much that I'd like some of our students. Uh, uh, that I will pass into our community to actually take a look at this and uh, go through the exercises and I think it's very beneficial for everybody to to build a resume and also you know learn about instructional design along the way right. so, uh, if if you contact me at ridvon at edongo.com uh, and ask for a discounted code uh, this $25 will jump into 10 and uh, you can go through it and get inside the course so uh the address one more time i want to share that with everybody since uh, i'm sharing the screen it's noise is it noise or noise how do you say, how do you say that you can say it any way you want okay. <laughs> it's noise but uh okay. sometimes it gets to noise so it doesn't matter got it so noise.edu.com and it, it will land you into this page. Uh, you click on the page, 
you will get the details of that page. So here is an intro video of Thomas, and here's the course details. And then uh, here is where I'm gonna, see here's the coupon code. And if you contact me or Thomas, it looks like Thomas also put a coupon. What, what did you discount it to? Is it $10 or? or I, I cut it in half, I, I just made it to 25. Uh, all right, uh, so oh, for this, uh, for the sake of this e-seminar, we're gonna cut it to $10. Is that okay, Thomas? That's fine. All right, so if you contact us, we will give you that uh, coupon, okay? And this has been pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so here's a question. Um, the question is, my question has to do with shifting from ID in academic world to corporate world. I have worked in academia for the past three years. Uh -huh. I know, I know I now need to show my experience in corporate. What is the best way to do this? I think that um, you could, you could uh, try the, uh, like Kilo Works uh, uh, internship would be one way to do it. That, that takes about four hours a week um one hour of a meeting each each week and then three hours of uh, asynchronous work with your team uh other ways to do it though are to talk to your local church uh and do courses for them find nonprofits that that are local that you can create courses for um the only problem there is that you still need you definitely need to understand exactly what needs assessment is like in the corporate world it's quite different from academia, and it's pretty different from what they teach in the master's program, in all the master's programs. And I've over 300 graduate students that I've worked with, they don't know anything about um, the needs assessment that is done in the corporate world. It's completely different. So um, uh, at least you might want to check with me. Um, but there are a hundred ways to get uh, to to demonstrate experience. Uh, usually, by finding someone and doing something for them, uh, whether it's in an internship or just doing something for your local friend, and you could do it for five dollars. It doesn't really matter so long as you're doing something and you have a business relationship with that one. You're going to put that project on your resume just like you would put a job on it. Um, if you're working on the Keelworks internship, you put that experience on, you don't even say it's an internship. You just put it down as instructional design. Um, Got it, very cool. So did you hear that? You can actually come here to keel-works.ediongo.com, register for some of the courses, go through them, and it looks like all of them are free, right, Thomas? Right, uh, as far as the internship, they'd want to email me. Uh, to yeah, they email you, okay. Uh, so email you, uh, but they can go inside register for some of these courses already right they can but the courses are really incomplete and they're not they're really lab uh space for interns and um i know that's probably not what people expect but that's that's how they're being used right now um best if you're interested in the internship um go ahead and uh, email me i have to screen you and uh you know give you the information on what it takes to be part of the internship, make sure you really want to do it, uh, that kind of thing. Well, definitely, it takes a commitment. Yep, yep, okay, so, uh, the, okay, here's another one. Uh, no, that's the same one, so yeah, it says, so that the same person says, yeah, we are on the same page, yes, I have my graduate degree in ID, and have no clue what corporate clients needs to perform needs assessments. Okay, so I, I hope that the feedback that Thomas gave you are helpful. Uh, but again, feel free to contact Thomas at thomas.garrett at edongo.com. Uh, you can all also visit the link Keelworks and go through some of the courses, but it's, it looks like it's best to contact Thomas first before you go to uh, any of these courses here. Yeah, if you go to Keyworks uh, DDO and Go, you won't find the um, the instructional design courses. They're not they're not posted uh, because they're basically active team uh, environments. Um, so you pretty much have to be on the team to get in there. <laughs> Got it. Got it. All right, so we have nine minutes to go. Uh, I will see if there's any other questions. 
Yeah, let me let me turn off my Skype. We could uh, we could talk about the Seahawks. Uh, no. Oh yeah, I, I see that you already wearing a Seahawks uh, shirt. I think right. Yep, it's my favorite shirt. I thought I'd put my favorite shirt on for this uh, for this meeting. All right, pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm going to a Sounders game today. Oh Sounders. yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah, they're playing at Timber, Colorado. Um, but I hope it doesn't rain. See, in Seattle, it usually rains. And uh, we've Come had. On, wow, that's not true. <laughs> uh, well, we've had the record high uh, April and May, right? Uh, weather. Yeah, April and May have been incredible. But you know, we've been dealing with El Nino, which has had warmer weather. And I believe we're now moving into La Nina, which is colder and wetter. Um, so it's uh, usually when we have an El Nino, the El Nino year is followed by a La Nina, and um, that's uh, that's cold and wet. So it's very possible uh, that this is going to be a cooler, even though right now the long range weather forecast is for a hotter than usual summer. But I think they're not, they just haven't realized that the La Nina is on its way. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I guess uh, people still want me to bring your email up on the screen. So here we go. So the email again is thomas.garrett at edi. Well, let me let me confirm that Thomas. Is that right? That's right. That's right. Yeah, you got it. All right. So uh, yeah, and Yes, yeah, because so, some people said if I can bring that up one more time. So let me see if, uh, if people see that, or because sometimes they just see you, they don't see the screen. So there we go. So that's that's the email. Uh, let me know if you're able to see the screen. Now, now I just brought up the screen. So it looks like in Google Hangout, I have to click on the thumbnail that shows the screen. Otherwise, it shows you and I. It doesn't, like you have to bring that to the screen. It's very interesting. Ah, okay. I thought it would have done that automatically, but no. Okay, so now they got it. All right, uh, so we have a couple more minutes left. I think we can uh, wrap it up. Uh, Thomas, do you have anything for the end? Uh, I would like to go over a little bit of ED on Go and what we do, uh, but do you have any other no, that's 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 good. Um, I think we pretty much hammered it pretty well. Um, Very nice. So again, the two the two links, uh, or the, the most important one for you guys that would like to get a job as an instructional designer is if you go to knowis.idiongo.com. There is the resume course in there. Uh, so if I click on it one more time, here's the resume course. And please email us. Uh, so you can discount the course to ten dollars from twenty-five. Um, By the way, uh, I don't want to. The, the, what, what you just said was that you'd go here if you wanted to get a job in to to learn how to build a resume, right? Yeah, this is this resume is for this course is for anybody who needs a resume. Right, it's not for instructional designers only. But since you are a senior instructional designer, you can you can kind of uh, massage the resume for people that would like to be instructional designers and give them feedback. Definitely, I can always help uh, instructional designers, and I, I usually the the one thing we try to say in this course is that the part of the things you have to do is you have to figure out how to take your past experience and make it relate to the job that you want. You you can't tell them all the nice things you want to tell them about a job that's irrelevant to the job you want. <laughs> I hear you. All right, very cool. So for the last. Uh five minutes or less, uh, I want to tell you about Ediango uh, briefly. And what you see here, the academies that we're showing you, keel-works.ediango.com, here is you have no noace.ediango.com. You can set up such an academy, uh, we say in less than 30 seconds, which means you can have your own academy, uh, own courses, and you can, you can even sell your courses by putting a price to it. So for instructional designers out there, even if you want to show your work, you show your work, what, what you have done uh, to maybe to an, a potential employer, uh, you can come here at ediongo.com and create an academy of your own. So from the home page, there's, there's this button here that says create a free course uh, or 
uh, the button uh, up right corner, which will always follow you as you go through the page. Okay, these two buttons will take you through a page that says get started in 30 seconds. So all you have to do is fill up these two steps. The first step is give your academy a name, come up with your own subdomain, and the system will tell you whether it's occupied or not. Step two is you give your uh, your your name and last name and email. So I, I, I guess I can go real quick. E seminar. This is May. So here is E seminar May. Step two is uh, first and last name. So if I say E seminar May at edionro.com and I hit finish. This will create now my academy in the cloud with the subdomain eSeminar main, may, sorry. So here you see at the top here, here's that. And I can share that link now with people and it will land into my course catalog. Now, this is my empty course catalog. So this is where you start creating your pages. Uh, you can change the logo right away, um, change the login logo. So if you scroll down here under themes, you can go ahead and customize that right away. So change the logos and the background image. Uh, and eventually, you can even point your own domain name. So, for example, I have my own academy at redvanaliu.com. If you want to serve your academy under your domain name, you can do that as well. So, take a look at this now. This is my academy. Uh, and uh, you can fill up with as many courses as you, as you like. Uh, even build a theme for your course catalog. We have introduced that recently. <coughs> Here's some of the... For example, here's his people building. So here's a brand called Skelnatic. They build their own themes on the course catalog. But behind the scene is Go. So you can serve your course catalog with whatever template you like. Here's a pretty nice looking theme that I like, what uh, Skelnatic has built. And it's, again, it's still Go behind the scene. So for anyone, any instructional designer that would like to uh, start getting experience how to use a learning management system, uh, Ediongo is supposed to be very easy to use, ridiculously easy to use, okay? And uh, uh, you can start building courses and maybe sell some of your work in the future. So that's a very brief introduction of Ediongo.com. If you have any questions at all, you can email me at uh, redvan at Ediongo.com uh, or Thomas. Uh, Thomas can keep you all the help you need to lay out your courses. So we have one minute left. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity and thank you all um, for joining us today. Uh, this has been awesome. We might, we will definitely invite Thomas in future e-seminars. Um, we'll also probably, when we get the next e-seminar, uh, I'll see how Thomas' schedule looks like, but we might have three people in the e-seminar. So me and Thomas asking questions to others uh, that we join, that will join us next. Well, that'd be great. Thanks a lot uh, for including me, Ridvan. And yeah, thank you, Thomas. Uh, so how long has Iyango been in existence since uh, 2013? So yeah, so that's what, three years, right? So over three years now, almost four, actually. And we love it. We have over what we call over a thousand active academies uh, around the globe. And uh, we go from the academia world to corporate. The latest uh, uh, client that we have in the corporate world is uh, in the restaurant business, uh, a company that has more than 400 restaurants. So we do, we, we provide the tools for them in corporate training. But here's our corporate. Uh, kind of page. So if you go to ediongo.com and you can tour K-12, higher education, corporate, uh, or individual, and you can see what we offer in the different segments. All right. So, okay. So you don't disappear on me if I start recommending this platform for course building to my clients. Okay. Here's not questions for me. So let's, let's take one more minute. I know Thomas, uh, I don't know how your schedule looks like, but I can, I can share more minutes here. I've got I've got time. I've got a bunch of guys in, in Kosovo waiting for me, but so. Oh okay. Let me see. So the question is it says so so you don't disappear on me if I start recommending this platform for course building to my clients. 
Okay, so I'm waiting for the rest. Uh, let's see. Apparently, they want to make sure they they want a assurance that you're going to still be around. Yeah. <laughs> how many persons are now sharing this session, and how could you answer all of them? I have a training center for educators and teachers, and I am searching for suitable e-learning tools. Okay, so it looks like. Uh, some of the questions are related not to ED on Go as well, but uh, Thomas, uh, you can you can answer some of these too probably. So, how many person how many person are now sharing this session, and how could you answer all of them? <laughs> I have a training center for educators and teachers, and I'm searching for suitable e-learning tools for synchronized training. Okay, let me join these discussions real quick. It would it, be an interesting question about what they mean by synchronized training. So, so, yeah, so this is from Spain. I can only see the the flags of people coming from, I think it's the Spain flag, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm sorry if I, if I actually missed, your, missed the flag. I shouldn't say Spain, maybe it's a different one. Uh, if you can elaborate uh, for synchronized training, uh, that will help us answer the question better. So when we're talking about synchronized training, we usually split uh, e-learning into two categories, uh, synchronized or asynchronized. Asynchronized means that people can get on at any time, post questions and answer questions within a period of time. So you might have a course that starts April 1st and you have assignments for that week. Seven, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, people could be at, uh, posting answers to questions, responding to each other. That's asynchronous. Synchronous, in, in my um, uh, internship, for example, it's mostly asynchronous. They collaborate um, during the week at their own time, but we also have one hour a week that we have a lecture and discussion that is synchronous. So also, some people might consider the term synchronous to apply to the fact that the course is uh, over a period of time, like it starts April 1st and has assigned work for each week. So the, the learners as a group move through the content together, uh, even though it's asynchronous, they're synchronized in the sense that they're, they're looking at the same content for a week, from each week to week. So I'm not sure exactly what that person means when they're talking about synchronized learning. Um, sometimes when people say synchronized learning, they mean that everybody's in the class at the same time. It's like a live session. We call that virtual learning, by the way, in right. the United States. Right, right. So, yeah, okay, so I, I can try to add into that uh, if maybe uh, this is what the user has meant. Uh, so. Because they said that they have a training center for educators and teachers, so I'm, I'm assuming it's a physical center. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so ED on Go is used also for traditional classes, where it's not just for online purposes. You can organize your course, even if you teach in a traditional way in person, uh, instead of you know organizing with files and folders uh, or Dropbox, etc. You can organize the structure of the course using ED on Go. Uh, and then people can have access when they when they go home as well. So, uh, in that case, you can also you know you can have uh, start and end date for the sessions that you like or the topics or units, whatever you want to call them. So as you can see here, uh, it's pretty flexible in how you structure the course. Okay, so here I renamed this to lessons, and you noticed in uh, Thomas's uh, uh, resume course it was named modules. Okay which means that you can rename your left navigation as you wish, okay? So, and you can snap, see Thomas snap more of these modules to the left side, okay? And when I say snap, it's pretty easy. Uh, if I come here and any of these sessions here, I can say snap to the navigation or add to navigation. And here is that, that lesson that I, people can reach out to that via the left navigation. So. Uh, if you have lessons or units that you would like to put a start and end date and make them dependable on each other or even hide the future sessions, you can do that as well. So it's pretty flexible in how you want to deliver. If I come here, for example, to this one and I say 
uh, I click on the edit mode here, okay? And in this here, I can, see I disable the dates, okay? Uh, but you can have a start and end date, and it will show when does this, this session start or this unit starts, and when, it, when does it end. But if I check this, it says is conditional. This means that the student cannot get to this unless they finish the previous unit or the previous session. So they won't be able to just click it uh, automatically. So for example, right now, so if I have done, right now I can go in the lesson list and I can click on any of these lessons. But if I make one conditional, you have to finish the previous one. And if you want to have a linear navigation for all your lessons, then you can just make all of them conditional. So you have to build on top of each other in order to to get to the last lesson, okay? But normally, you'd use the conditional, correct me if I'm wrong, Ridvan, you use the conditional if you're doing a course like for a university and you are, you know, assignments are given each week and you want the, the students to stay together and study on the same subject matter, you'd use the conditional then. If it were individual learners coming in yep. uh, at the, on their own, and working on their own pace, you don't really, bother with the conditional would you agree that's that's absolutely right yeah so if you want yeah, absolutely i just want to reiterate so if you want somebody to just come here and do a self-paced course then you don't want to do that conditional they can jump from one topic to another one assignment to another etc yes you write those okay so i will keep uh, getting more answer more questions here uh so i think now, now these are more related towards the young goal but uh, let's just uh, uh, the platform i say uh, so the one that says, so you don't disappear on me, she, I'm not, I'm sorry, it's not maybe a she, but, uh, the question is, I'm building a freelance clientele for developing online courses paid and free. And I think this platform will be easy for my clients to use. Can this platform integrate into an existing WordPress site? Very, very good question. Now, a lot of our clients have their websites in WordPress, okay? And as you can see, ED on Go has the authoring tools to for you to build the lessons, okay? So uh, to, for, for anyone to build their lessons, you would still have to come to ED on Go. So for example, you see that how this one is, here is a video or uh, let, me, let me go to a, some of the testing courses that okay. I, I can show you. So, and I'll get, I'll get now to, you know, integration with WordPress. So if I come in here, the reason I want to show you is, is something where uh, you don't use WordPress to build the sessions. Like uh, if you were going in that direction saying, can I use WordPress environment to build the content? No, uh, you still have to come here and build the content using ED on Go. And it has all of these tools that you can build the lessons with. And it even, even has a live session tool. So if you wanna have a virtual session, just like WebEx or GoToMeeting, you can schedule that with your, uh, with, your, uh, with your teachers. Now, for the clients that we have that use WordPress and EDU on Go, all they do is somewhere in your WordPress website. So for example, here's Skillnatic. Now, they're not using WordPress, but imagine that Skillnatic was built with WordPress. I'm sure maybe I can find some of the clients that use WordPress. Would they just use an iframe to and then uh, put a link in to draw that? Uh, no, here's the way. Here's the way I would suggest they do it. Okay. So yeah. you have, let's say you have a WordPress website that. Uh, let me see. I, I I might be able to find somebody using WordPress here. I think these guys use WordPress. Um, probably not. Home Center, let me see these guys. Now they're going, we're going straight to them. Uh, okay, so maybe, I, I, let's, let's assume that Skillnatic was built with WordPress, okay? The way that you would make it work where if you click on your courses and it goes to the course catalog, there's, there's two different ways you can do this. Uh, a lot of people do it with 
they they create a subdomain courses dot skillnatic dot com okay and that points to the course catalog of ed on go and then you point you put that link inside wordpress so you put at the top navigation wherever you want to have that uh, you can say you know my academy or uh, uh, all courses and then you create that subdomain and point it to the course catalog that you have at edu on go that way you can serve under your own domain name your course catalog which is integrated which is linked to your wordpress website it doesn't it's not really integrated with wordpress you cannot author the the environment with wordpress all you have to do is link it to the course catalog so if you assume that this schematic was done with wordpress and they created a, in the main navigation a button that says all courses and then this all courses now is pointing to the course catalog of ed on go which is doing it right now okay and also uh if you click, you know, you can point to the login page of the LMS or the course catalog. So if I click here, see, notice it says academy.skillnatic.com. Okay, let me make that big. So academy.skillnatic.com. And if you assume that this is a WordPress website, all you have to do is just link that here. Okay, does it make sense? I didn't follow any of that, but I'm sure some of your smarter people did. Okay, so no, they, they have a pretty interesting question. What about a single sign-on with WordPress? That one, okay, so that's a very good question. That one, we we do that. So we have single sign-ons with different systems, but we do that for, uh, we don't have that public. Uh, we can, we only do that for specific clients that they ask for, okay? And we do not have a plugin inside WordPress that you can do it yourself, uh, but we absolutely do a lot of single sign-on with, LDAP uh, with a lot of SIS systems, uh, student information systems, um, etc. So if you, I think the, the the potential user is asking for a single sign-on for you know for the instructors they have already registered inside the WordPress website, can they log in with the same credentials to ED on Go? We do that for uh, a lot of the clients, but you have to reach out to us and we have to learn about your business, etc. Okay, uh, great. And once pointed, Iango takes over. Okay, and once pointed, Iango takes over and if a person has to pay for the course, they can then be given access to the course. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so if we do a single sign-on with the same credentials, they can log into the course. Of course, if you have a paid course, they have to pay before they get in, okay? Uh, but even if you don't do a single sign-on, so let's assume, again, back to this, let's assume that Skillnatic was a WordPress website. All you did is point it to your course catalog, okay? Uh, <coughs> or to the login page of your course catalog, then you're done. When they click on a course, so here's a $4.95 course, okay? I click to the course. I can see the details of the course coming up, okay? I click on take this course. So this is a presentation page of the course, whatever you want to show. I click on it. I can log in if I ha already have uh, some credentials. If me, assume that <laughs> the student took one of the courses, they can use the same credentials. They don't have to register all the way. Or I can register as a new student. Okay, so let's say I already have some credentials. Uh, let's see if I can do this one here. Well, we did the e-seminar. E-seminar. Hey, I'm just going to use that. You come in here, hit login. Now it's going to ask me to pay either with PayPal or with a card. If I come here and click on the card, I fill up this information. Uh, so the form, the bill information, and the credit card. Now, the way it works is Ediongo receives the uh, the money and Ediongo pays the academy. So we collect the money for you, okay? And we pay you based on your traffic. If you have uh, a lot of traffic, we can pay you daily. Uh, if you have, you know, somewhat traffic that you would like to cash out at the end of the month. And some academies, uh, they do it at the end of the month. Some academies do it every week depending on your traffic. All right, so these are all great questions. And again, if you if you email me directly, we can uh, 
can chat further and learn more about your business and so on okay so i guess people are thanking us uh thank you everybody i know we went 16 minutes over the time uh, i don't want to prolong this anymore if you email me uh personally i can absolutely uh, get back to you and also thomas uh, uh and both of our emails are at edongo.com so you can see that on the screen so again <coughs> thank you so much everybody for joining uh i hope we answered your questions uh don't forget, if you want the resume course to be discounted, email me and Thomas, and we'll talk soon. All right, Thomas, thank you so much for the time, sir. And Thank you. Talk. Thanks for including me. All right, everybody. Let me see if I can stop sharing my screen and wave to people. There we go. All right, Thomas, thank you. Have a great rest of the day, and enjoy the weekends, everybody. And Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.